here's where it gets really interesting. In the 1940s, Barbara McClintock, she was like a hacker. She was this brilliant geneticist at Cornell. Um, she, she did these experiments on corn plants, and she started hitting her corn plants with radiation in order to break the DNA, and she wanted to see what would happen. And what the plant did when it had damaged DNA – it went over to another chromosome and said, hey, mm. I, m this part of my program is all corrupted, but I can find another part of a program over here that's not the same, but it'll work, copy, paste, go. And the plant re-engineered its own DNA in real time, repaired itself, and went on to reproduce. Wow. Okay, so it would be like, it would be like if your app got corrupted and it went and found code from another app and fixed itself. This will fit. Let's try this. Boom. And all of a sudden your app works and it's actually a little different than it was before. So Barbara's. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go well, ahead. the epiphany, it sounds like, is you, you found out, wow, there seems to be some intelligence in this code. It's, it's not maybe there's something going on there. Yes. Where there could be Bar some intelligence. Barbara McClintock said, what does a cell know about itself? And the answer is, we don't know. Hmm. Right but now. But they know something. That's right. And I want to get into that because I like... So what I hear, what I hear overall is that you went back and forth with your brother. I know how tough that can be, actually. I have a sister, but I, I love her. But that can spur on our drive to find some of these things out because family is some of the provides some of the greatest opportunities for growth, I guess we could say, right? That's the nice that's a nice way you to think? put it. Yeah. So I, I can tell there's more to that story. And we're talking about years and ten years and twenty years of research, but it sounds right. like the epiphany you had was there, there was some middle ground you found, and it sounds like if we can make people comfortable enough to discuss the possible middle ground, that actually there, there could be some of both, and it doesn't have to be so polarized. And I saw that on your website. It's a safe space, cosmicfingerprints.com, yes. that nobody's going to be insulted and belittled and things like that. And I also saw on your website... Um, you know, the idea is, who wrote this code? Uh, for example, you have a $3 million technology prize, which is amazing. Yes. And you mentioned on your website that the origin of this information that, that allows, you know, a plant to go to another plant and download it, like, who wrote that? Ama all these amazing things. I mean, you talk about in your, in your book, underreported studies, and we're going to get to some I want your thoughts on that are really going to blow people's mind. I'm talking about real studies from like mainstream science and things that NASA are coming out with. And But your $3 million technology prize, which is really amazing, people can go to cosmicfingerprints.com for more on that. The origin of information is one of the central problems in modern biology. No one knows where the genetic code came from. No one knows how the first cell developed. To solve this, the author, which is you, Perry, organized a private equity investment group, which is offering a prize reminiscent of the X Prize for a natural process that produces coded information. The prize amount is $3 million uh, as of November 2016. So, Perry, tell us about that. That's really amazing because who wrote this code, Perry? Well, so... There's a million codes, right? Mm -hmm. There's HTML, there's barcodes and zip codes and Chinese and English and PHP and et cetera, right? Um, every single file format on your computer, whether it's doc or XLS or whatever, it's, it's all, they're all languages, they're all codes, right? So there's a million codes and 999,999 of them are designed by humans. Sure. And then there's one code we don't know where it came from, and it's called DNA. Mm -hmm. So the inference, the natural logical inference would be that it's designed. 
And um, and this is, you know, this is a point. Design being that, intelligence, like a, a yeah, greater. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Every code, mm -hmm. like the better the codes, the smarter the programmer right. has to be. And we're talking, you're right, so there's simple codes like Morse code and like a, a six-year-old could probably do that. Uh, TCP IP is like a little more complicated than that, right? Sure. Um, so, you know, more complicated codes seem to be designed by more sophisticated people. Uh, DNA is a code that can, you know, where a cell can literally re- invent itself. And so, you know, the, the, the creationists really score a point with this one. Well, here's the thing, what I found, and I've been ha having this debate with people for more than 10 years now, I, I came to a realization, I, I you know, I, I could bonk atheists over the head with this, um, you know, well, this inference to design that we have in DNA, but, but I slowly started to realize something. And, and Brian actually, like, we had more arguments and we had more discussions about this, you know, as time went Brian's on. Brian's your brother. And Brian's my brother. Okay, got it. And he goes, Perry, listen. He goes, you know, that's great and all. And, you know, it certainly, you know, would seem to suggest that there's design in the universe. But there's only one issue with that. He goes, it's not like a scientist who has a job and works at a university and needs to get a paycheck. You know, it's not like that guy can say, oh, okay, God did this. So let's take a three martini lunch. <laughs> he goes, all a scientist can do is peel the onion another layer. So if you like, if you come to the end of a scientific road or you hit a brick wall and you can't figure something out, if you say God did it, you might be missing something. Right. Like there is a difference and this is really subtle, but I really want people to stop and think about this. There's a difference between identifying God as an immediate, like there's a dotted line. This is across that dotted line. And now you're in the God zone. There's a difference between doing that, which is always pretty arbitrary and pretty subject to later being wrong right? versus God is an ultimate explanation. And I don't know how many layers there are to the onion. And, and it started to dawn on me, you know what? I need to create a middle path where we are inviting people to solve these problems rather than announcing that they can't be solved. Sure. Because if I say God did it, in a certain sense, I stop the conversation. Now, do I believe in God? Absolutely, I do. But I'm not going to insert God in the mysterious spaces and then declare game over. That's not, that's, not, that's not what Galileo was trying to do. It's not what Isaac Newton was trying to do. It's not in the spirit of what I, I think is, is really responsible science. And so... I put together this technology prize and, and I found that if, if I can start asking the question, okay, so how can you solve this? How do you get a code without designing one 